well time for us to get into the discussion. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on the show. John, uh, to you first, uh, as Virat Kohli said, winning against Australia, very, very gratifying. Would you say that's the happiest moment for Team India when they win against Australia, particularly a comeback win like this? Yeah, first of all, I think we're getting quite used to seeing India actually perform against Australia now. So it doesn't come as a big surprise. And I think the most you know, promising thing is that, is that they've come back from uh, a very heavy defeat in the first mm -hmm. uh, match in uh, Wankhede. Uh, in the past, we would have perhaps expected India to lay down and, and let Australia dominate them and going forward into this series. But the best thing is they just keep pegging away, keep pegging away. Right. And, um, you know, the consistency through uh, through their star players is, is, is what's been telling over the last couple of seasons. So mm -hmm. it doesn't come as a great surprise to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the more and more we sort of look at this established side that they have now, I don't think that we uh, I think we'll consistently see them beating Australia uh, in both here and in Australia. Right. Uh, Charu, uh, they have beaten Australia here by 2-1. How much confidence would this win give the team going into uh, a very tough series now against New Zealand? <laughs> well, it's, uh, uh, it's going to be a very different situation in terms of conditions. So, you know, it's best not to uh, look too far uh, because New Zealand conditions and, and what we've seen in India are, are chalk and cheese. Mm -hmm. But just seeing the victory for what it is, I think uh, India showed a lot of heart to come back from uh, being soundly beaten that first uh, game in Wank at the Wankhede, where they would, I think, left a little cold. Their preparation seemed to, at that point, been suffering a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, New Zealand's going to be a very different kettle to fish because of the, the weather there. And, and even though it's technically summer, but, you know, the wind uh, and uh, perhaps the cold at times can really upset uh, even much better teams as India is likely to be. But yes, uh, going in there after winning against Australia, the team knows it's much better than New Zealand. It's just that home conditions do play, mm -hmm. for good reason, a very important role in this game. Right. Um, Sanjay, after the first uh, loss, the 10-wicket loss they had in Wankhede, uh, Matthew Hayden said it seemed like one of the teams did their basics right and the other did not uh, do their basics that well. Would you, would you say that got reversed during the course of the series? <coughs> Well, Rika, if you really look at it, the role of the opening partnership has been extremely vital. Australia won that match, not even losing a single wicket. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember when we had a chat on your channel, I kept saying that Rohit Sharma is literally the linchpin of India's batting performance in one-day cricket. Right. And, uh, you know, he had a modest score in the second, but again, a good opening stand, and we won the second one. Mm -hmm. But this time, he was back to his, uh, you know, magnificent best and that was another brilliant hundred from him mm -hmm. and I think when you have two players who are dominating one day cricket like Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma in the same team mm -hmm. uh, right at the top of the order and it tells you how strong the Indian batting is now look at look at the fact that today Shikhar Dhawan could not open and therefore right. you had Rahul opening the other day Rahul goes at number five mm -hmm. and actually literally blows the opposition out of the field mm -hmm. now it just tells you that you have both talent as well as the flexibility within the Indian team mm -hmm. that's why I believe this this team has the problem of plenty in terms of talent and plenty in terms of what I call as operational flexibility mm -hmm. big advantage to India and I think every opposition team must be extremely worried about taking on India on the battlefield at the moment but John, I'll have to ask you this question. Now that Shikhar Dhawan is injured, he's gone for x-ray on his shoulder and we haven't got an update uh, on him yet. Does that mean worrying signs for India ahead of the series? Because the first match of the series is going to start on the 24th. It's always a worrying sign because, it, you know, you're looking at a consistent top order. You're looking at a consistent uh, Indian side that you want to try and keep uh, uh, together. Mm -hmm. So if he comes out of that equation, then it's disappointing for the side and, and the integrity of that side. Um, what, what I liked about today was the commitment that they had in the field, and that was shown when Shika dived for that ball. They're never going to back away these Indian boys in the field now. And so that's lovely to see. But also we're now seeing more and more injuries because of the intensity in the field uh, that both T20 and, and, and sort of the faster 50 over games are now bringing to the bringing to us. So we're going to see these injuries more and more now because of what's expected in the fields. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to train for that. But unfortunately for Shika, the way he fell looked like it was either an AC joint or potentially even a clavicle issue. So I'm glad they've gone to get him x-rayed. 
-hmm. as he was as the team was coming off uh, at the end of that game he looked reasonably comfortable and he mm -hmm. certainly wasn't in a sling so i take that as a good sign if there was right. definitely an issue uh, from that x-ray of there being an issue with his AC joint or that clavicle, then he would have been in a sling. Mm -hmm. So I take that as a positive. Let's give it 24 hours and, and let's hope, fingers crossed, that in, India goes to New Zealand tomorrow night with a uh, an intact squad. Right. Uh, Charu, talking about Rohit Sharma from being the third slowest Indian to score 2,000 runs in ODIs, uh, in 82 innings to becoming the third fastest in the world to get to the milestone of 9,000 runs. How phenomenal would you say has Rohit been and what really would you say has been the reason for this turnaround? Well, I don't know about turnaround. He was always a very, very talented bat. And, you know, figures are what they are. Statistics <laughs> you know, tell you some kind of a story, but not, not all of it because he is... Let's use a, a common word used for him, gifted, because he sees the ball just so much quicker than anyone else. And that allows him that freedom of movement, because when he plays his shots, it looks like he's had so much preparation time. So he's a very special talent. And I must quickly mention that I'm so glad that he's opening for India in the test matches as well, because that was a, a bit of a rocky road for him for a number of years. And I'm glad that's sorted out. And I hope he continues to also play for India, test matches for India, because he's just too precious a talent to be left behind. And he's, we wasted so much time by not playing him in the test matches. But in the shorter form of the game as well, because he sees the ball quickly, he can play across the line right. a lot more fluent than many others. You know, some of those big sixes that he hits, everything is so effortless for Rohit. So, I mean, 9,000 is just uh, one small mark in this uh, journey for him and he's going to go on for much, much more. He mm -hmm. just has to make sure he keeps himself fit. Um, uh, well, Sanjay, would you say that uh, the Australians really missed the trick in the game because, uh, you know, they, they saw that there was a dry pitch, they won the toss and then, um, you know, the decision to bat... Um, perhaps made the chase master Virat Kohli uh, smile wider? Well, you know, I can, I can tell you that um, if you look at Australia, and I'm slightly surprised, they're such a professional team, uh, but I think they have a fairly suspect middle order. Maybe mm -hmm. it's still, you know, it's still a work in progress perhaps. But, you know, what's also disappointing is that I remember in the past there were, you know, batsmen even lower down the, lower down the rank who could you know, just kind of get those big runs in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Australia clearly seems to be not folding his innings on a high. And I think in one-day cricket, the way you end has a degree of a psychological impact when you are getting off the field and the other team is getting into bat. Mm -hmm. Because the way you end does give you a certain positive momentum. And I think Australia seemed to be somewhere down the line losing that in, in, in frankly, the last couple of matches. So, you know, it's something for them to work out. I, I'm no one to really give them any advice on that. Mm -hmm. But as far as India is concerned, I mean, in case we are not going to discuss this today, I do believe, Rika, that Jaspreet Bumrah's fitness and his ability to kind of get the ball in the right spot, with the line length and everything swinging just the right way, not getting the batsmen to really attack him at all. Right. And in keeping them tied up helped Shami, in fact, get into the wickets as well. So I think that is a very encouraging sign. Mm -hmm. he, 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 in fact, uh, gave a stellar performance today, uh, only conceded 38 runs in 10 overs. Well, John, uh, he's spoken, Sanjay has spoken about Bumrah, but what about Shami? Those four wickets that he, he got really uh, pegged Australia back and gave in the, India the momentum. Yeah, the beauty about Shami is he's not afraid. Now, he's not afraid. He'll, he'll give it a go. He'll bang it in. He'll pitch it up. He'll look to swing it. He's got he's got great skills. He can he can because he bowls quick. He and he and he swings at at pace. Mm -hmm. He's always going to be dangerous. I see him as a key weapon for them in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, back to Jaspreet. Um, Jaspreet, there's no doubt about it. He, he's world class. I still think he's a little underdone. I think he can actually get better. Um, you know, he, his radar wasn't quite right early on today. In the last couple of games, he's had, you know, an over or two. You know, we're just not used to seeing Jaspreet have bad overs. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he's getting it all together. His fitness is coming back. You know, match fitness is something, you know, you've got to take into account here. He's been short on that for a while. Mm -hmm. He's going to get better and better. And I said, I say, look out New Zealand when he gets to New Zealand because he does everything with the ball. He seems that he swings it. He has pace. Um, but for me, Shami will be the bowler that I'll be looking out for in, uh, in New Zealand because... On the back of what he did today, we saw on a, on, on a pretty good wicket, I mm -hmm. think this is the man that, that, that could be very damaging for uh, the New Zealand side once they get to, uh, get to the far shores. 
uh, since you spoke about uh, Bumrah's fitness, John, this question is again to you. How long do you think it would take for him to back to be back in full fitness? Look, given the time that he's been out and with the limited match practice that he's had, um, you know, this series was exactly what he needed. It. I always say that it takes two or three games to sort of ease your way back into into fitness. So. This has been perfect for him. He's, he's got through this series without any uh, reoccurrence of his original injury. Mm -hmm. He's proved that his pace is back up there. He's starting to move the ball around. Um, he lacks a little bit of accuracy, but again, that's that's just time in the middle and time, you know, in the nets bowling. But the good thing is, is that he, he got through this series, no, no reoccurrence of his injury, mm -hmm. and uh, he's back to delivering skill sets that we know that he has and, and we all love watching. So, uh, right. New Zealand are in for a tough time. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that right now. Interesting. Charo, since we are talking about the fast bowlers, let's talk about the two Aussie fast bowlers as well. Uh, Pat Cummins um, and uh, Mitchell Stark. In fact, uh, they conceded 130 runs, uh, went bowled those 16 wicketless overs. Would you say that there was something in their arsenal that was missing uh, in India? Well, everything was missing. I mean, they were both very disappointing today. They are top of the world in terms of uh, their bowling abilities. And especially Mitch Stark, when you bowl at 150, you've got to get the length right. Now, easier said than done because every country, every pitch has a certain length which is ideal. And today, there's no doubt that Mitch Stark was either too short mm -hmm. or he was too long or he was too full. And, uh, you know, the Indians enjoyed that because if he's uh, got the right length going, he's a very, very difficult bowler to, uh, to score runs off because he moves it at great pace. And so too, Pat Cummins, he had a very bad day today. But in contrast, Hazelwood just put it right there on the spot, very accurate all the way through till towards the end mm -hmm. when he got a little bit of reward as well. So, yeah, yeah he covered up for these two. But, uh, yes, uh, one of the major reasons India won today is because both uh, um, Mitch Stark and uh, Pat Cummins were way below par, just couldn't find the right length. And, of course, uh, neither the line, sadly enough, because I don't know what Mitch was trying to do uh, by bowling so wide at times to uh, the players, uh, the Indian batters. So, yes, major disappointment. Although, mind you, the spinners didn't do too badly. Zampa was okay, and of course, uh, Ashton also not too bad at all. Would you say this was the best bowling side that has come to India in a long time? Charu, the question is to you. For Australia, mm -hmm. well, on paper, well, yeah, on paper, I suppose, you know, their medium pace, well, their fast bowlers are about the best because they have a wide choice as well. Some couldn't make it, but uh, those who did are about the best in the world. But we'll have to say that, you know, Zampa's still sort of ramping up and uh, right. uh, Agar's no, you know, I mean, match winner with his uh, left arm orthodox. So, uh, no, I think the spin department certainly not the best in the world, but their mm -hmm. faster bowlers are uh, top five in the world, clearly. So mm -hmm. that disappointing performance was one of the big reasons India won with a measure of ease today. Mm -hmm. um, well, Sanjay, the last question goes to you. Virat Kohli uh, getting out on 89, it would be gratifying for Josh Hazelwood to have gotten him out. But he also got the man of the series. However, Steve Smith was the one who scored the maximum number of runs uh, uh, in the series. Would you then say that it was uh, right for Virat to have gotten the man of the series, walked away with the man of the series award? I think so. I think, you know, end of day, remember that he was chasing the uh -huh. runs and and, you know, uh, you have to hand it to Virat Kohli. I mean, this has now become uh, almost like a cliche that the end, at the end of every match, we are talking about the greatness of Virat Kohli. And for him, because he's the captain. And, you know, th there is a lot of pressure on an Indian captain. We all know that it's considered to be amongst the toughest jobs in mm -hmm. the country after, you know, the political CEO of the country, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, like it or not, I mean, he's under constant scrutiny. I think if India loses, you know, the world piles onto him. But I think as a batsman, he, he's elegant. I mean, you know, a man who plays one-day cricket without eschewing risks and right. at the same time, you know, keeping the run rate at such a remarkable level. Mm -hmm. So you, when you look at his performance over, the, over all the three matches, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, he, he didn't score too many runs in the second one. But he always looks like a man who can take the match away from the opponent. Obviously, right. Steve Smith has been a revelation since his comeback. Mm -hmm. You've got to concede that, you know, it's difficult for Steve Smith to play in India as opposed to Virat Kohli, for example. Mm -hmm. But there's no denying that Virat Kohli, when he's out there in the middle, this was a decisive match. India had to win this. And, you know, at that point, anything could have happened. Right. But as a captain, he inspired Ayer. And, you know, the, his whole confidence right. Ayer's is cameo just simply perhaps infectious. came because he was yeah. partnering Virat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on the show.